G'day folks, happy Wednesday, Ronnie Dale, for wheelingwesternaustralia.com Red eye straight off the plane Rockstar, I am feeling like I need a wet fish slapped across the face uh, I got here with Wayne, there's Wayne, before we reveal Yeah, just minus the wet, uh, wet fish yeah, don't, That's mine by the way So, we get to the airport and we get picked up in that how cool is that? That's the Mega Tour, by the way, in case you didn't know. And here's Justin. How you going, guys? How are you, Justin? Good, mate. How you doing? Yeah, very good. You a bit surprised to get picked Kind of up. a bit dreamy because I'm tired. I'm going to go get that wet fish for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. I'll, I'll seriously take a wet fish. And trust me, these two need it. They're a little <laughs> bit delirious, I think. <laughs> we, are, we are rooted. <laughs> so what you will be seeing coming up is this rig here on modified so this is a wednesday video with all the outtakes i guess all the bits in between behind the cameras behind the scenes we're also going to have a bit of a look at the patriot factory here as well check out some super tourers what toy haulers yeah toy haulers we'll show you through the x1s x2s yeah the whole range i think what you're going to be most interested in though is what's going on in that factory over there definitely well let's let's do that before i collapse Let's do it. Let's go have a look. It's a Sunday, and uh, how hot is it today? I don't know. It'd have to be mid 30s. It'd have to be 35. It's bloody humid. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why we're standing in front of the fan here. I'm trying to get some sweat out. Yeah, that's it. Well, let's let's have a look around, though. Eh? Let's have a quick. Just let's just roll on through. Cool. All right. Well, um, it's it's Sunday. Everything's jammed in here. We've just. Um, We've just extended this factory. We actually completed this week, so we're still getting set up. There's a lot of junk all around the place, but I'll show you through what's going on. Yeah, cool. Uh, we'll start with this, eh? Yep. So this is Sarah's Christmas present. Uh, FJ43, one owner, original one. Um, I found this uh, through actually a good mate of mine. He found it in a barn. He was out there chasing old Land Rovers. So we're gonna do a full restoration on this, back to completely original. We were planning on doing a resto mod on it and you know doing a, a VDJ and maybe AD series chassis, but the car's too good to chop it up. So, so you're gonna try and keep it as original. We're possible. gonna keep the body original, so I wanna keep that body looking exactly the way that it is. We'll probably just put a new floor plan, uh, floor pan in it. Um, but then we're gonna do full chassis, new brakes, wheels, tires, fully rebuild the motor, have it driving reliable, and this will be uh, my wife and my daughter's toy, you know? Nice. I got the Mega Tour, they got that. <laughs> I think it's a good trade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good trade. I'd drive either, to be honest. Yeah. Me and the boys had a trade plate on it yesterday, actually. We took it for a good drive around the street. and It still mate, starts, runs. It's Man, it is ridiculously hot in here. It is. <laughs> it's like a sauna. Look, we probably should open all the roller doors. <laughs> now I know what the boys complain about every day. <laughs> it's a Sunday. Yeah, it is a Sunday. Um, all right, so this is a full fruit 79 Super Tura. This has every option box ticked. This one's going to Singapore. So this is doing, have you seen some of the stuff they do in Singapore in the jungles and yeah. that crazy... Is that what they're going to use this in? That's exactly what they're using it for. They've got two of them, they've ordered two from us. This one here behind us is getting built the same spec for the same customer. Um, they're going to use this for tours through the jungle in Singapore. Far out. And that's like, you know, the log bridge, like they push the cars over, the log rafts across the river. They're going to that over. And that's what they're doing with it, you wow. know. They go through with guys in front of them with machetes, chopping yeah. down tracks, and that's, that's awesome. what they're doing. So this thing has got, like I said, every option box uh, ticked. It's got a coil conversion. It's on 37s, because obviously it's legal over there. Bead lockers as well. Um, Recaros, the full Red Arc setup, the whole TJM setup. It's got all of the lights, awning. This is, like I said, every box has been ticked. This is basically my black truck. It's the same build. Oh, okay, the one you sent to the US. Yep, the one that's in the US. This is basically the same vehicle. Oh, that's still there, is it? Still there. Yeah, yeah still there. I'm doing a big trip over there uh, in May. Going awesome. through the Grand Canyon with the black truck, so that's going to be pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Mm. So you said these are beadlock, yeah? Yeah, beadlocks. Um, obviously, we can't run them here in Australia, but mm. over there, they're allowed to do it. Um, 37 MTZs, we've got a kit now for cutting out the back of the guards. Um, we've developed that so we can get 37s under them. Um, it's still only sitting on a three inch lift. Um, so it still makes, it's still drivable, you know. Mm. Once you start going over that three inches, like the black truck's almost at about five inches, but the black truck's a lot of body roll. Um, this rides a lot better. 
The other thing that we've done in this one is um, diff gearing as well. Mm. A lot of racing guys terms. say as well, like, you, like stay two to three inches any higher, just too much. It's too much. Yeah. It is too much. A project, something that'll catch my eye. H1. This is actually, um, believe it or not, this is my older brother's car. Um, he was um, living in America for about six, seven years. He was one of the head engineers for Subaru uh, Racing Development. And while he was over there, he built this, he bought this. This was the last of the civilian H1s. This is the real Hummer. This isn't like a yeah, H2 there. or a H3, like yeah. a wannabe Hummer. This is, this is legit. This is the real deal. Yeah. This is the truck that you can fully submerse and drive underwater. And I can't remember exactly what the time is, but it's something like, you know, I read it something like 16 minutes you can fully submerge this thing and drive it underwater. That's crazy. The airbox will hold enough air. Um, all the, the discs, so the disc brakes are right up underneath the belly of the car. There's no brakes at the wheels. So when they run There's over, no brakes at the wheels? No brakes at the wheels. So when you so pull brakes up, on the shaft. Brakes on the shaft. So, and that's for landmines. Wow. So when the military drive over landmines or they get shot at, mm. then they don't do damage to the brakes, they can keep going. When you pull up to the lights on this and you hit the brakes, when you come to a dead stop, the car will rock like a boat for like sort of oh, six, of the, seven seconds because of the yeah. play in the shafts, you know? <laughs> um, it's got auto-inflating tyres, so you can pump the tyres up and down from inside uh, the cab. That's nuts. Um, is that a standard thing for a H1 or? Standard for a H1. Because this is military, no, this is No, civilian. this is the civilian. So what they did is they took the military spec car, they put in sound deadening and put in leather seats and, you know, air conditioning and a radio and that, and they produced a uh, civilian model. Okay. You know? Like um, the one Arnie's got, yeah? Yeah, well, that's exactly it. This is like Arnie's car, the same sort of deal. But you can see, so the conversion's all happening at the moment to right-hand drive. Um, Again, you know, like I said, this was my brother's car, but believe it or not, it's been in Australia now for 12 years, just sitting in his shed, doing nothing. Oh, really? Yeah. So now it's... Um, not much longer, though, eh? Yeah, not much longer, not much more to go now. Um, he's kind of working on it in between projects. And now we're kind of talking about, uh, I suppose, patriotising it, doing some doing some cool stuff with it. But it's, it's, it's how, something different, you how, know? Why is it? How's the, the, how's the, the seating the position? Console. Look, look how far away you are. Yeah. When you're driving it, it feels weird. Does it feel, does it feel a bit crammed in though? Oh, it's, it's so tight in there. Like you really, it's kind of like you're in a fighter jet or something when you're yeah. in there, even for such a big car. How the hell does Arnold Schwarzenegger fit in there? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but you know what, the other funny thing is too, when you're driving down the highway on this, it's so wide, your wheels are on both painted lines. Oh, really? You are line to line, that's how wide it is. Oh, it is bloody wide, yeah. isn't it? So it's the same width as, as a full-size prime mover, a Mack truck. But um, really ballsy. Um, Automatic. Yeah. Order. Yeah, they, they only came out in order. Oh, did they? Yeah, I don't think they actually made a manual. They were all automatic. Oh, but the whole, so the engines, the whole motor, you can see here, there's the back of the motor there. Everything, there's nothing from that seal. There's nothing down if you get underneath and have a look. Everything is tucked right up in the top of the car. And that's for driving over landmines or getting shot at or how, oh, wow, okay. how they work it out. You see what I mean? Yeah. There's, no, there's nothing there. Yeah, you've got independent front and rear. That's yep. some serious suspension. Serious. And that's, that's basically how they come, eh? Sitting, well, that's it. That's serious, awesome. Serious, serious gear. Yeah, you can see I've looked at a Hummer before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is obviously going to be something. This is going to be something big. This one. Um, I don't know. Do we talk about it or not? Do you want to tell me? <laughs> All right. Uh, this is another Mega Tour. So this is a Mega Tour that we're building for a, uh, for a customer in Mackay. This is, if anyone's watched our, our build series on YouTube, this is where my Megatura started. You know, a white GXL dual cab. Um, we've just stripped it out this week. It's going off to paint next week, and then we're going to start the full build. But this one here, um, we're actually going to put an auto in it. An auto? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've, we've, uh, we've got Mark's full drive uh, putting an auto in this one for us. So it's going to be a little bit different to my Megatura, but besides that, everything else is... You're still a manual. Mine's still a manual. I don't believe in... Well, I shouldn't say I don't believe, but a 79 to me... Should be should manual. Should be a manual. I agree. So for me, I'd, I'd keep mine... All of my 79s are always manual. Yeah. I'm not really interested in auto conversion. Mm. And we've got some 200s here that are obviously chopped. Yep. So there's uh, three chopped 200s in here. All the builds are... These ones are both getting started next week. Um, this one here is actually going to be the new uh, demo car for Patriot Campus. So this is going to be a brand new Super Tourer. So this is going to be the first of our 2018 Super Tourers. We're going to release this at the, uh, at the Brisbane 4x4 show in March. And um, this has got the whole new range of, of Patriot Super Tourers gear. Are all these Super Tourers? Yep, all of them. 
awesome. They're all super tourism. So I, I, I don't know whether you're aware, but we don't do custom work. We only build turnkey vehicles. Yeah, so the car comes in. Car comes in, we handle, we buy the car, we do the conversion through creative, um, and then we do the full build to a Patriot Super Tourist specifications, and that's how we sell it. Yeah. But okay. until later on this year, where we start releasing yeah. Super Tourist products uh, for people to fit to their own vehicles. So we're currently in New South Wales, we crossed the border. How many hours ago? Oh, three and a bit hours. Three and a bit hours ago. Uh, we're on our way to. Where are we on our way to? It's private property, it's a bit of a secret spot. So we're mid coast New South Wales, we're, we're just west of Coffs Harbour. There you go. Mm. But uh, yeah, private property, so we're not going to disclose where we're going. Yep. And uh, nice river camp. Mate, beautiful river camp. This is um, this has got to be one of my favourite parts of Australia down here. Awesome, I absolutely love it. We're only you know four hours from the office. Looks so, forward to it. Yep. Awesome. So behind us we got uh, Wayne in the uh, second vehicle, the Hilux, uh, which uh, I acquired, so we could do some uh, running shots. Um, I had a bit of a drive of the uh, Mega Tourer earlier. The ride's really nice, eh? Hey? Um, quite surprised you wouldn't think it would run like a stock vehicle no, look we put a lot of work into getting to that that spring rate in the airbags right and i think um, mm. i think we've nailed it and now we've hooked the trailer up yep. put a quad bike on the back yeah softens it up doesn't it yeah uh, this is yeah still rode really well though mm. but yeah, it's less less stiff in the back yep yeah definitely um so these are your airbags in here We're running different pairs so that's the front that's the front the rear and the rear and they change on the fly, right? Yeah, so it's got a leveling system built in. So as we load, uh, as we load the truck or put a heavy trailer on the back, it'll come back to the standard ride right now. We can, I can switch that off as we're driving or leave it on. So as we're driving on off cambered roads or whatever, the car will just keep on correcting itself and stay nice and flat. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. So what Justin's talking about is in those roads that are cambered for the rain to come off. That's what we're talking about, right? Especially up north, yeah. yeah. So normally you're kind of sitting on a bit of an angle and if you're on a long drive it actually becomes a bit annoying. Yep. That's actually cool to know that this truck and it just picks up that So side. the airbag system's got its own ECU and we've got a controller that we can program it to do whatever we want it to do. That's awesome. Even when we pull up to camp, if we're unlevel on camp, we can level each corner of the, the truck independently to get the, if we had a rooftop tent oh, on yeah. get a depth flat. So when you take the quad off, do you lower the right hand side or left hand side yep. to the drive Yep, so we can lower one side, but normally I just go all the way down, but we can lower one side and, and get the quad bike off. Of course. You know. We're still running about 45 pounds in the tyres, we haven't let the air out either. Yep. So uh, when we get to camp, before we go out exploring, we'll drop the air right down and you'll see the ride will soften that much more again. Nice. We have arrived at the camp. This is going to be our base camp for today and tomorrow, most of tomorrow. Staying one night. Um, we made a big boo boo. We all contributed into packing up the X1 trailer with all the camping gear. Um, there probably was a shovel staring us in the face, but we didn't bring a shovel. So, Wayne. Oh, what are you doing, mate? Asshole. <laughs> Wayne is shoveling. Hey, you reckon there was a, a shovel staring us in the face? Oh, I actually had one leaning against the roller door when we packed oh, up. Oh, I did too. That got jammed in the door. <laughs> oh man. I'm uh, gonna blame. Um, I'm gonna blame Wayne. <laughs> I'm blaming Wayne. Everybody so had a job this morning, Wayne. <laughs> I'm keeping my mouth shut because he's actually shoveling the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, look, turns, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, by the way, this road marker was already here. That's actually that's going to serve as a good shovel for um. Uh, camp oven. This isn't going near the camp oven. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, you're going to pick it up with bare hands. You probably want to burn it off first, a little bit. Hey, Justin, did we bring uh, welding gloves? Yes. Oh, yes, we did. Beauty. All right. Didn't forget that one. So when we go do our bush duties later, we're going to have to bring a road sign with us. <laughs> well, the weather's are really different over here. Been bloody hot all day and now it is pissing down. Ugh. Back in the Hilux. So 
So, uh, Justin, is this weather normal down here? Or? No, it's, um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame actually. But um, there's still a bit of blue sky around, so well, hopefully it doesn't set in. It was then time for a bit of action video and some mad still shots. So here we are, and also a bit of a cool down. As you can see, Justin was having a bit too much fun, I think. And these are just a few of the cool shots that we took of the Mega 6x6 or Mega Tourer. If you want to see more shots, go to my Instagram account and also wait for Modified. A few of these will be thrown up here and there. Come on, we're going to make it. Oh, you're not, are you? Oh, no. You're still moving. We're still moving. I think we're off. <laughs> oh, is Wayne going to get bogged here? Is Wayne going to get bogged? Mate, don't you worry about me. Is Wayne driving, not me? This is all Wayne. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why we're bogging. <laughs> this is really soft rock. When you walk on it, you sink, pretty much. Yeah, but I think it like pushes down and then compacts. Yeah, it kind of it kind of moves the rock in front of you. It's weird, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's soaked, but you can't you can't soak it. Yeah. All right, back to camp. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. All right, so. Bit more behind the scenes stuff here. We uh, have set up here. I'm using my small tripod because I had to travel over here. I had to bring a lot of gear. There's the Mega Tour there. We're about halfway through our modified episode, and the issue is the engine bay. <laughs> we, we can't see into it. So Wayne's going to move the Polaris. He's going to stand on the back of, of the Polaris with the camera, and Justin, we're going to lower the suspension, aren't we? We'll drop it down. We'll come down, sort of. About four inches. <laughs> just, just drop it four inches. Yep. We'll, we'll drop it down four inches and then maybe we can get up there and have a look. Man. Uh, my cruiser sits at three and a half inches. It's dro we're dropping your cruiser by four inches. Yep. <laughs> How high is it off the ground is it after four inches drop? Um, so we're still, well, with the 35s over standard, we're still going to be about six inches higher than the standard cruiser. So okay. we've got four inches in the portal axles and then 35 inches. Oh, yeah, yeah, the portals. Mm. I forgot about them. Yep. Yeah. All right. And look, you'll get more information on the modified episode, but uh, the reason why there's 35s on it now is because the whole thing is engineered. Yeah. Believe it or not, it, it is engineered, mod plated, everything. Yeah, fully done. Everything's engineered now. Yeah. Mm. That's awesome. Mm. That's awesome to see something like that can be engineered in Australia. Yeah. So Australia isn't quite the nanny country as, you know, WA is still the nanny state though. If you put the work in, you can get it done. Yeah, uh, I reckon you'd be going through twice as much paperwork yeah. in WA. Yeah, right. Like Queensland, you can get three inch lift standard, can't yeah. you? Yeah, we can. On mm. 79. Yeah, no problems. Not in WA. Right. Where's your helmet, Wayne? <laughs> Not going far. <laughs> yeah, he's just moving it. Just put it right in front of the camera. And if you get up, I'll pass the camera to you. Yeah, about there. Uh, yeah, so what are we shooting with here? The Sony. And it's wearing a jacket because it is raining on and off. It's actually quite nice when it's raining. And then sticking to our plan of getting some low light shots, we headed back out, did some more driving around, and got some wicked shots in the low light. These are some of my favorite shots I've done for a while. Most of these were taken with a wide angle lens, a 16 to 35 mil lens, a Canon lens, L lens, and I shoot with Canon 5D Mark III. Got heaps of cool shots in low light. And yep, we are still filming. We're now gonna head back to camp and uh, check on our 
and our uh, pulled pork. It's the next day and Justin is now going to take us on a bit of a sightseeing drive in the 6x6. We are going to a place called Dale Morton and he wants to take us to this tunnel which convicts have carved back in the day. Got a red belly black snake up here. Kind of want to keep your distance a bit. I'm just intrigued because uh, I haven't seen one of these in WA. I don't think we get them over there. Not that big, but it'll probably kill you. We just arrived at Dal Morton. So this used to be a town. Mm. On the other side, there's like a plan of the town. So yeah. It was actually pretty big. Yeah, it was a big town. It was like uh, gold mining was yeah. happening all around here. Gold mine town. Yeah, and this was like a main route. This this road was the main route through here. It's pretty cool to see all this old stuff, eh? Hey? You know? So that was the old trading route from Brisbane to Sydney. Yeah, the, the story goes, now I'm not 100% on it, but the story goes that it was the main trading route between Sydney and Brisbane. And they used to bring the convicts up through this route for some reason. They blasted that tunnel down there and then they dug it all out where I'm going to take you. Or, and you can see like pick marks in the side of the tunnel. Mm. And this is where they used to run the convicts up and down between Brisbane and Sydney. Awesome. Yeah. Look forward to seeing that tunnel because I have seen it on Yeah, well, there's, a, there's videos, a picture but... of it there. It's um, it's really cool to see. You know, it's like pure rock. You can imagine how long it would take to blast through it. You know? Oh, hell yeah. And it's not like they would have had like... And take a pickaxe to it. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty crazy. Look at little bales of wool coming up through here. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. Hard enough digging a hole with a road marker. <laughs> so we'll just saying. Wayne, Wayne forgot the shovel. Oh yeah, Wayne forgot Wayne, the shovel. Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> He's shaking his head behind camera, <laughs> but it is his fault. Nah. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, pretty cool. We'll keep moving, we'll get up to the tunnel, eh? I reckon. Yeah. tunnel now, that Justin has taken us to, and here are all the names of all the Muppets, they appear to have oxygen thieves in this state as well, mm -hmm. so Grace Tracy, yeah. official Muppet, yeah, good on you guys, good job, pretty cool, cool eh, yeah, pretty awesome. awesome. yeah, you might as well have been like, imagine being in here blasting this out, look all up there, man, right, yeah, it's and then when you pop out the other side, that view of the river? Yeah, it's pretty epic. It's amazing, huh? It's just a beautiful part of the world, man. And here in this thing, you're it's pretty epic too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was a quick five days. It went in a flash to us. Three days in the Gold Coast, two days in New South Wales. Can't even pronounce the name of where we went because I don't know it. And it was a privilege to drive probably the most modified road legal vehicle in Australia. That was really cool. And one to tick off the list. Until it builds a bigger one, of course. It was a great experience. Wayne definitely had fun as well. And I think next time we come to Queensland, we better host a meet and greet for all the followers and fans of the channel. So thank you very much for watching and do stay tuned for the full feature of Modified coming up soon. Soon as in two days after this video was released.
Thanks for watching the relaxed Wednesday video. If you want to see modified episode 47 with the Megatora, it may be on the screen right now. And if it's not there, it'll be there very soon. Cheers. See ya.